We are joined this morning by Chief Malik Aziz. Chief, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning to you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you, thank you. So let's start by talking about road safety. After that hit and run, the death of Barry Mitchell, we just saw Darcy Spencer's report. This happened April 21st. Two questions for you, Chief. What do you say to the driver or witnesses who have not come forward yet? And then also, what do you want residents to know? Is anything being done to address dangers like inadequate lighting on the roadway? Well, first, I'd, I'd send my, my heartfelt condolences to the family uh, for such a, a traffic and horrific incident uh, that happened. Uh, I would advise the person who did this, who committed the hit and run, to turn yourself in. We are actively investigating. We are going to find you, and it's always better for you to turn yourself in than have us come find you. Uh, you left the scene of an accident, uh, and a, a, a man is dead, a deceased, a family is in mourning, uh, and we expect for you to do the right thing. For the witnesses who were there, uh, there were many uh, who could see that, who's, who have not come forward. We are urging you to come forward or call uh, or contact pgcrimesolvers.com or one eight. 66411 tips uh, and let us know you can do that in an anonymous way so we're urging them to come forward uh, we are working on safety uh, issues dealing with safety around pedestrians across our county uh, and uh, among those things uh, outside of the enforcement and prevention is everything to us so we're looking to prevent things from happening uh, before we take enforcement action but those things are happening from citations uh, to environmental uh, design uh, looking across our roadways but just the education to slow down, uh, take a second look, uh, and don't be in such a hurry because tragic things like this can occur. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Chief, I want to talk about uh, the newly implemented the teen curfew at the National Harbor this past weekend after the weekend uh, before that. We saw the videos, a lot of teens kind of out of hand. We did hear positive reviews from business owners, but some worry this may take resources away from other parts of the county. So do you see this sort of curfew as a long-term solution for uh, teen crime, or is it a short-term fix? Well, I think it can be both. But uh, the National Harbor, I want to first, you know, uh, thank the county executive, Angela also Brooks, for her uh, courage in moving forward uh, with the emergency order and the leadership of Chair Ivey and Vice Chair Harrison, along with our August County Council, for uh, recognizing the urgency to do something uh, that was a, a, as crazy, uh, horrific, uh, you know, scene out in the, the National Harbor uh, the, the two, two weekends ago. Uh, so what we look at is is that we don't think this is a panacea to cure anything. It's just one tool in the toolbox, in the tool chest, to help business owners, to help residents, to help parents, to help the police, as we all gather together uh, collectively to make sure that our young people are doing something positive, uh, going, heading into a better uh, positive direction and being more progressive instead of uh, being down in the National Harbor fighting, uh, smoking cannabis, shoplifting, and doing all of the things that we don't expect our young people to, uh, to be doing. Uh, so we're looking at it in, in both terms, long and short term. And we had a very successful uh, weekend this past weekend. We engaged uh, several youth and, and parents who uh, we didn't have to issue uh, any citations. That means that cooperation and compliance has taken effect. That's accountability. Uh, that is responsibility. Uh, those things have, have taken a measured effect and a measured approach so that we can make sure places like National Harbor and shopping, you know, complexes around our beautiful county are taken care of and maintained and they're safe uh, for our residents to enjoy and for our business owners uh, to be uh, prosperous. Yeah, uh, you're right about that, Chief. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the autism sensory kits that were donated to your department today. Uh, why are those kits so important? Uh, it's so important as we engage. I, I like to say uh, that if we can't help you, if we cannot communicate, communication is a very big aspect of what we do in community engagement. Uh, and so we have many individuals in our county uh, who have autism. Uh, and when we have an officer approach to things that could happen between that interaction, we don't want them to go negative. So we these sensory kits, uh, we're, we're appreciative of Dr. John Hussman and his wife Terry as well as the executive director uh, Beth uh, for this partnership going forward that the officers who come across uh, individuals who uh, may be suffering from autism that we recognize that as the first step and we move forward so officers with 
those kits in their cars, officers with the kits available to them at our uh, police divisions. We think it's going to have a positive result, a positive outcome uh, dealing with our many uh, citizens, our many residents who have autism. Uh, I will say the police department, uh, we've been uh, addressing autism for quite some time. Uh, it's in our basic police academy, instruction blocks from, from the professionals. Uh, we have it in, uh, we did a before the badge where we did stops, uh, traffic stops and interactions with uh, our young people who were uh, driving who have autism. Uh, it helped police, it helped them, it helped the community. Uh, and also we recognize this month, I'm wearing a badge right now uh, that is reflective, as you can see, of, of us recognizing Autism Month, National Autism Month. So it's important for us to engage uh, in these sensory kits are going to allow us to be even better. I think it's positive. It's very productive for us. Yes, I think so too, Chief. Real quickly, because we are running out of town, but I wanted to ask you uh, what you think about the commander's uh, draft and Jaden Daniels will be playing down the street there in FedEx Field. Yes. Well, well, let me say this, because I heard you before. You, you've been talking quite a lot, and you said as long as the Dallas Cowboys, America's team, lose, that you were very happy. So I want to say this. You've gotten to me, and you've heard it here first, uh, that uh, there's nothing like the five-time Super Bowl champions here in this area. Uh, we're going to win another one, but I, I, you have, you have, you've got my coach. You've got a couple of coaches. You've got my, some of my players. So you know what? I'm now going to be a cow mander. I'm making a transition to a cow mander. You can have America's team, and then you can have the commanders, just like you. So we're looking five-time Super Bowl champs. We're fighting crime. We're preventing crime. And we're going with America's team. I heard you. I've been listening to you. You've been talking a lot of noise. We'll see when this. Hey, great draft. Jaden Daniels is going to be awesome. He's a great quarterback. You had a great draft. You had a great free agency. You, everything is going in a positive direction with the Washington okay. commanders. I'm looking forward to a great Great season. All right. Well, you know what, Chief? Uh, I appreciate you. I like a couple Cowboys fans, so I'll add you to that list. <laughs> Let's for me. Uh, Police Chief of Prince George's <laughs> County, Malik Aziz. Thank you so much for joining us on News for Midday. Yeah.